And I'm Bella. If your cooking skills are stuck in a rut, we're here to help. If your kitchen has seen better days, we'll show you how to fix it. We'll give you recipes, hacks, and the confidence to own your kitchen again. Oh my God. This is Sammy and Bella's Kitchen Rescue. Sammy, I'm Bella, and we're on our way to meet a sports mad family who want to eat delicious food that's healthy. We're going to meet Tracy. She's got three kids, two dogs, and a chicken, and she's looking for fast, healthy meals the whole family will love. And did I mention that her pantry is a disaster zone? But I do love a challenge, so quick, I'll race you to the door. What I really want Sammy and Bella to show me today is some really quick, fast, tasty recipes. Um, my life is crazy busy. I'm working, Greg's working, the kids are doing like way too many activities. I should learn to say no. And I've got three kids that all have varying tastes of what they like to eat. And so if they can teach me some recipes they all like, I'll be so happy. Hello. We've got your morning coffee, Tracy. Oh, thank what you. A I love day you. Ahead. Show Come us the on kitchen. in. Come on in. This is a stunning kitchen, I have to say. But, oh, yeah. there's the pantry. Okay. What's going on there? Well, we're in the middle of our renovation. We've finished the kitchen, and that is our glamping pantry. We're sort of going a bit rustic. Yes. Yeah. Rustic, rustic is a good word. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, it's a perfect <laughs> word for that. And you do have a very beautiful, brand new kitchen, but. Bella and I know where people hide their little dirty secrets in the kitchen, and that's in the fridge. Are you yes. nervous for us to look in your fridge? Oh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. Oh, yeah, you've got a lot of stuff in there that's just kind of slotted everywhere. All right, we've got some herbs in here. Everything's sort of open and you're using it. Oh, what's this, Tracy? Capsicums. Some shriveled up capsicums. You haven't oh, stored it very well. No, oh. I haven't. I would <laughs> chop the end bits off. What's this? What about this? It's not very well sealed <laughs> in the fridge. No. How long has this packet been open? Is that even bread anymore? <laughs> it's gluten free. <laughs> Feel that. Maybe it's for the chooks now. Okay. <laughs> the chicken will eat that, but will the okay. chicken eat all of this? Uh, eventually, yeah. Eventually. They, yeah it's very, Oprah is very well fed. She's Oprah, a, Oprah okay. Oprah the chicken. Oprah yeah. the chicken. And then what's this? That's last night's chicken curry. Last night's chicken curry, okay. And this is your your little um, plastic wrap job. It's not very well sealed, not very no. hygienic. Okay, so look, overall it's not too bad, but I would probably give you a B plus rating. Yeah, I'd actually agree with that. B mm. plus is a good rating, but don't you want to be an A plus? So do. Yes. Okay. So do. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Tracy is in desperate need of a kitchen rescue. We'll teach her some basic healthy meals, better food storage solutions, and make her kitchen worthy of an A-plus rating. We're taking Tracy and her daughter Sage to Kitchen Rescue Central for a quick and healthy meal the whole family can enjoy. Ladies, we're making salmon en papillot. Fancy French word, but in real English or real Australian, it's called fish and baking paper. Do you want to learn how to do it? Yes, please. OK. So first off, we start by putting a piece of baking paper in the base of a baking tray, just like so. We've got some pre-cooked potatoes that are going to go into the bottom. And then some fresh dill, because salmon is nothing without dill. At least that's what my grandma says anyway. Sage, do you want to cut open the salmon? We can put that directly on top. All right, so there's one big piece of salmon for the it's whole huge. family. Wow. Just gorgeous. Tracy, why don't you slice up those zucchinis? But be very careful, we've got a sharp knife. I'll show you how to do the first one. Top and tail it, and then we're going to cut it into quarters lengthways. OK. So it's thick enough and it will cook at the same time as the salmon. Mm -hmm. And you can do that with the rest of the zucchini. Thank you. And because we are baking it all together in that one pan inside mm -hmm. the paper, we do want it to be all sort of even thickness and sizes to each other so that they'd all do cook at the same time. All right, let me grab those ones. Thank you. And Tracy, look, this is a great family sized piece of salmon so that you can feed everyone and it's so rich in omega-3, so it's great for the kids. And you guys are so sporty and active, so it's important to eat healthy meals like this. But last thing we need is some lemon. So if you can thinly slice some lemon and we'll lay that onto the top. Bella's going to season it all. 
And then, so lemon, dill and salmon, such a good combination together. And you can add any vegetables you like. Do you guys want to lay some of the bits of lemon on and around the salmon? You can make it look very rustic, which means mm. it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be delicious. We like that. <laughs> and a few good dollops of butter go on there. Yum. Butter makes everything <laughs> taste better, seriously. Okay. It's going to taste amazing. Oh, I thought that I had an obsession with butter, but I think Bella oh, has yeah. just outdone me mm. on the butter steak. Come on, it's kind but of French flavours. It's French cooking and they need some butter. Pretty tasty. <laughs> so this is a big family meal and we're going to cover it up with two more pieces of baking paper, like so. And that's going to keep all of the juices locked in. It's nice and strong so it won't break and it really keeps all that steam and all the extra flavours yeah. in there. So once you've got these two on, we want to start folding around the edges and kind of keep crimping it like this all the way around. And this is really going to lock in all of that steam and it's going to gently cook that fish and it's going to be perfectly flaky. Wow. That last bit needs to be tucked in. Just like so, and voila, mm. that goes into the oven. We're here with a hack that will completely transform your rice. This is for the most delicious rice you've ever had. First thing is to cook the rice. We're going to add the rice to the pot, top it up with water. Now we've got our delicious flavouring, some oil scalded spring onions, pepper, ginger, eschalot and garlic. And then we've got a little dressing. So there's some sesame oil, soy sauce and rice vinegar. Mix that all in. Pop the rice into the flavour sauce and then finish mixing it through. And garnish with some sesame seeds, spring onion mm. and for the daring, a little bit of chilli oil. And there you go. A delicious, big bowl of goodness for the whole family. Here at Kitchen Rescue Central, we're rolling up our sleeves to show Tracy and Sage another quick and delicious recipe that you can make in minutes. Bella looks like a tomato. I do look <laughs> like a tomato! You do. And because of that, we thought we'd show you a tomato yeah. dish. And you love Lebanese food, so we're going to be doing some vegetarian stuffed tomatoes yum, that are baked yum. as well. Does that sound good? Yes. So the first thing we need to do is prepare our tomatoes. And we're using vine-ripened tomatoes because they have a much better flavour. So what we're actually going to do is we want to keep some of that beautiful vine on there, but we're going to cut off just at the tops of the tomatoes. Snip there, there. So we want to actually hold on to the tops and we're going to hollow them out like these ones here and that's where we're going to stuff them. So Tracy, I'm going to get you to gently cut off the top and we're going to use a serrated knife because it's much easier to cut through those beautiful soft tomatoes. There you Perfect. go. <laughs> and so we're going to scoop out the centre, but we're not going to throw it away. OK. It's a very full tomato. It's delicious. Oh, yeah, well done. Now, Tracy, I know that you love Middle Eastern fruit, so we're going to put some fantastic Middle Yum. Eastern flavours in there. If you want to grab some parsley, just twist off the leaves from the top and pop them into the beaker. Mussels. Mussels. Yeah. There you go. And I'm going to pop in some cumin and some salt. Yum. Smell the cumin. It smells delicious. Isn't it gorgeous? Sage, do you want to give it a whiz? Perfect. Now we need 500 mils of liquid. Any ideas what we're going to do with this concoction? No. We're going to cook the rice in it. Oh, so this nice. is a great way to use up all those bits from the inside and flavour the rice. So, a cup of rice goes into a pot. And we follow it up with our tomato-y Lebanese concoction. Yum. And we're going to add a little bit of butter. Mm. Mm. Lid on top and let it work its magic. Mm. Rice is ready, so I'm going to put a big handful of healthy baby spinach in and some feta. Just going to let that steam. It literally only takes 30 seconds for the spinach to become all soft. Yeah. Right, spinach is wilted. I'm going to give it a quick stir and that's ready to stuff. So, if you guys want to Grab some teaspoons and really carefully take some of that stuffing and pop it straight into the tomatoes. Okay. Just be careful because it's hot. Yep. 
Smells amazing. Mm -hmm. I love the overfilling rice because those little bits of rice that fall out, they're going to get nice and crispy in the oven, so you're going to get some different textures going on. Amazing. All right, guys, that looks perfect now. The most difficult part is this whole recipe to put the little tomato hats back mm. on. So if you can help me with that, I'd be very grateful. Aren't they mm. adorable? <laughs> <laughs> they're like little... Parisian tomatoes, but with a Middle Eastern flavour. They're little berets. <laughs> they little tomato berets. Yes, now, so Bella's going to put this in the oven. All right. 200 degrees, so nice and hot. You don't want to cook these through. You just need to warm it through. Yeah. All right, oh, ladies. Smell mm. that. Perfect charred and delicious. You guys have to give one a try. Dig yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> But guys, perfect tomatoes. There's a little tomato missing its beret. What do you mean? Spella. Oh, you look so cute. <laughs> Is it because I'm wearing a red top? It's exactly yes. why. You guys are mean. <gasps> Actually, I'm going to leave this on. It looks good. Really good. It's pretty mm -hmm. cute. So, have a try. Tell us what you think. Is it good? It's so That's good. That's so good. That's amazing. We're here with a sweet treat you'll be nuts about. We're making a nutty chocolate bark, which is super easy for Tracy and the kids to get involved with as well. First thing I need to do is melt these colettes. I'm going to go do that in the microwave. And that chocolate melts so easily because of the colette shapes. Let's mix it. Ready for some nuts as well. Pour it out onto a baking tray with a piece of baking paper. Let's top it off with some extra nuts, dried cranberries and some pepitas. And now that's ready to go in the fridge to set. Tracy's afternoon teas will never be the same again with this recipe. Now, Tracy and Sage, we know you guys love cooking at home and you've got that beautiful big new kitchen. I want to know, do you guys make scones at home? Yes. Yes, yeah, sometimes. sometimes. And are they successful scones? They're all right. I don't think they'd pass muster at my mum's Country Women's Association meeting. Oh, oh, OK. Well, I think we can teach you a great recipe for some lemonade scones. Yeah. And, Sage, you're going to get your hands dirty to start off with. Is that OK? Yeah. All right. So, first of all, we're going to use some really good quality butter. And that's going to go into some self-raising flour. Now, what you need to do is you need to massage that butter into the flour, mm -hmm. and it needs to become like a crumbly sort of mixture. And while you do that, I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Because <laughs> what salt does is it brings out the delicious flavours, even in sweet dishes. And chunks of butter are good in there, because those chunks of butter, they kind of, like, glisten and expand, and they give you a really light scone. Who doesn't love a scone with jam and cream? Oh, yeah. Especially when they're hot just yeah. out of the oven. Oh, yeah, so good. Nothing better. All right, that looks absolutely perfect. So we're going to get onto our lemonade now. And the secret is the more bubbles you have, the better the texture of your scones. So if you've got a really, really freshly fizzed sparkling water, you're going to have great scones. So we're going to add some lemonade syrup to the mix. And because this is sweet already, you won't need to add any sugars okay. at all. And you want to measure out exactly 160 mils, and that gets poured straight into the mix. Do you want to do the mixing? Sure. You're the one getting dirty today. <laughs> and then some fresh cream too. How good does that look? Yeah. Mm. It's really important that we don't overwork the dough now. So as you can see, there's a couple of dry bits left and a couple of little wet bits left, and that's it. That's okay. when we stop, yep. OK? and we can start rolling out the dough. So maybe, Tracy, you can help her by holding up the bowl because yep. it's big and it's heavy. It is. And Sage, you can just use the wooden spoon to scoop out <laughs> all of that. Are you having fun? Yes. <laughs> not allowed to make this mess in the kitchen, so... <laughs> oh, is that because oh, Mum's got her in the kitchen? She often makes slime and other little, act, <laughs> like, science things, and I can't stand it because it's like... Shaving cream and <laughs> gosh no what else is in it? Something Or when a Rowan's on made that volcano and it went all over the kitchen. Yeah. Oh okay. wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, can I tell you a really funny story? When Bella was 14 years old, she put a pot of oil on the stove to cook and she wanted to make some chips. And then she forgot about it because she got a phone call from one of her boyfriends. Good old I only old. had one. No, actually, I didn't have any boyfriends. <laughs> one of my crushes. One of my crushes. But what she really did, important. What she did was she left the pot of oil on, oh, and it no went and combusted into flames. 
and the rain shield started to catch on fire and she had to, she was at home alone, she had to yell out to the builders across the road to come and save no. the day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but it gets worse. So five years later when I was 14 years old, I put a pot of oil on the stove after school to make some spring rolls. And then my pot of oil also combusted into flames and the range hood and the cupboards above were on fire and I had to run next door. And Bella was at home as well. And I said, Bella, Bella, come and help me. She goes, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And I was like, what do you mean you don't know what to do? You've been through this before. <laughs> and Bella starts throwing plates on the pot thinking that she's going to cut the oxygen and the flames are going to go I was go throwing on. the plate. I was trying to put the plate it on It was there. like a Greek wedding, OK? <laughs> the plates were breaking everywhere. And we had our little sisters who were six months old asleep in the other room. So Bella's like, take the twins. I'll handle it. I've got one fat twin, two fat twin. I'm running out. I've got the cordless phone. I'm calling the fire brigade. And then next door, there's builders. And I yell out, help. And they came in and they saved the day again. Hey, isn't your husband a builder? Yeah, yeah everyone ah. loves a tradie. Well, <laughs> we owe our homes, our lives, and our cooking careers because thank oh. God our parents let us back into the kitchen. <gasps> okay, now that we've got all of this lovely dough out onto the table, I'm going to dust it with some more flour. And Sage, what we're going to get you to do is just gently press it into sort of a round shape. And we want it to be about this thick. So you don't so want to knead it, you just want to kind of squish it into shape. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. 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 Now with this floured cookie cutter sage, we're going to get you to cut some scones out and then we'll pop them onto this baking tray. Now make sure you don't twist, just push it straight down and pull it straight up. And dipping it back into the flour each time stops the dough from sticking to the cookie cutter. Good job. Yep, perfect spot. How do you think she's doing, Tracy? I hand over kitchen duties to sage. Forever now. <laughs> so now that we have all of these cut, what we can do is gently pull away the dough from the outside and we're going to gently lift these scones into our baking tray. So you see that little bit of flour that we had on the cookie cutter really helps us to pull that dough away from the sides. Mm -hmm. And these are going to go in the oven. And, guys, we've got to clean up. Oh. Mm. <laughs> the unfun bit. To the sink, please. Thank you. It's behind you. Ooh. Yum. Yum. Smell good. They smell amazing. Okay. They look fantastic. Look how light and fluffy they are. Well done, mm. Sage. Mm -hmm. You did great. Have you made scones before? No. Ah, okay. Well, I think they're cool enough to try. Yum. Who wants some cream? Yeah. Definitely me. Definitely you. Yes. <laughs> this is absolute country women's heaven. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sage, these are amazing. Oh. Nana Peg will be so proud. <laughs> Oh well goodness. done, Sage. Well done. I think I love you more now. <laughs> <laughs> Still hungry? We'll show Tracy a new trick on a classic afternoon tea offering. When we were kids, Mum used to always give us whole tomato for morning tea and you just, like, eat it like an apple. I know, we got a few strange looks in the playground, but Tracy and her family are super active and always on the go, so they need some great snack ideas as well. So we got them these Perino tomatoes and they're fantastic for snacking, really healthy and they come in this little box so you can literally just pop that in your handbag. Yeah, and they're the perfect snack size and I love eating them with hummus. Mmm, delicious. Back at Tracy's house, it's time to make her kitchen A+. OK, let's get started. Tracy's got a household full of children and animals, so I'm swapping out her cleaning products with safer versions. And I'm going to get stuck into the fridge and help her better store her leftover food. It's holding it. Tracy and Greg have a very busy family, so they've got food going in and out of that fridge constantly. So the first thing we need to do is help them organise that food, which will get rid of this flimsy plastic wrap and make sure we use a good quality plastic wrap to cover the food. Seal it on nice and tight and your food will last a lot longer. So they go through a lot of herbs in this house, but Tracy did say that sometimes it goes to waste. So I've got a great hack on how to keep your herbs fresher for longer. So we've got beautiful parsley here and what we want to do is tear off those stalks and those are going to be for the chooks. And then we've got some paper towels. So we're going to wrap up and wet it. So wetting the herbs like this keeps them nice and fresh and stops them from dehydrating. 
and the next step into keeping them from dehydrating is to pop them into a snap lock bag. And those are going to stay nice and fresh and last night's dinner is going to be ready to eat again without stinking out the fridge. Guys, come on in. So we've been very busy in your kitchen. Have a look over there. Brand new pantry. Oh my gosh. So we replaced the glamping table you had, cleaned it up. Can you believe how much space you've saved? There is so much space. And we organised all the like with like items so it's easy to find because you've had a lot of mixed items in there, half open. I think that you've been buying new stuff because you can't find the old stuff. You just kept buying more. So now <laughs> everything is together and you should oh. be able to find everything you need to cook. Thanks. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay, let's open her up. So we've reorganised it, cleaned oh, it up. Wow. We got you all that wonderful fish that we were cooking with before, so you can make the recipe tonight, even if you like. Maybe. You can help Sage. Yes. Yep. We've also cleaned up all of your little food scraps. We've got these snap lock bags. And this is a great way to keep your herbs fresh in the snap lock bag as well. And then we've got your leftover dinner, which is now properly sealed with Thank plastic you. wrap. And then we've actually put some new storage containers in here as well, so it's reorganised everything. Wow, so but handles on them. And you've got these holes which help the cold air circulate oh. around all the food. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. Oh my gosh. But wait, there's more. Oh, Have a look in there. Oh, oh thanks, guys. So these are fantastic earth friendly products, Wonderful. but most importantly, they're friendly for your family and your pets. Look, you can store all of your. Plastic wrap there as well, quite easily. Fantastic. Doesn't end there. Wait. No <laughs> There's way. more. Wait. <laughs> so a couple more gifts here for you, including the soda machine, so you can make those beautiful lemonade scones anytime. Wow. Fantastic, thank you. And you've got extra bottles so you can keep fresh bubbly water in the fridge for the whole family every single day. And the hand blender. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it is like Christmas. Thank you so much. That was so unexpected. That's just beautiful. You're what a so well. wonderful treat. You've got all the ingredients, all of the tools. Consider your kitchen rescued. Great fun. We've got some great recipes. Everyone was happy, so I'm happy. That was fantastic. Thank, Thank you, Sammy and Bella.